some post for you, Poirot. Mr. Hercule Poirot, you fancy yourself, don't you, at solving mysteries that are too difficult for our poor, thick-head British police? Let us see, Mr. Clever Poirot, just how clever you can be. Perhaps you'll find this nut too hard to crack. Look out for Endover on the 21st of the month. Yours extra, A, B, C. Oh, it's some sort of joke. Maybe, but please remind me to inform Chief Inspector Jap. It's here, Poirot. The murder took place in this street. Grim place indeed. Tout à fait, Hastings. The streets of Andover are in a terrible state. Look, there's Chief Inspector Jap. He's talking with a policeman. Let us try not to get our shoes wet. Over here, it's Hastings and Poirot. You missed the nine o'clock train? We took the half past ten. Luckily, the service is good to Andover. So, Chief Inspector, what do we have? The victim is called Alice Asher. She owned this tobacco shop. She was killed yesterday with a blow to the back of the head. At what time? Let me just check. Is Jap being too relaxed? Let us find the clues that prove it. Jap is in a good mood. I bet he thinks he's already caught the culprit. The last customer to see Mrs. Asher alive left her shop at half past five. The body was found at around 11 in the evening by an officer doing his rounds. The shop door was open. That's what alerted him. Had anything been taken? A little tobacco, maybe, but you'd hardly murder for a few smokes. There's nothing of any real value in the shop. What type of woman was Mrs. Asher? In her fifties, married but separated, no children. A husband? Aha, uh -huh, Franz Asher, the husband. Alcoholic and violent. It's said that he regularly insulted his wife and threatened to kill her. Do you think he's guilty? We'll look for Franz Asher. If he doesn't have an alibi, the case is closed. A very unoriginal murder. Peut-être. May I examine the crime scene? Of course, old chap. I'll be with you in a minute, Poirot. This place is run down. This is a really cutthroat neighborhood. Anyone could have committed the crime.
The place is unusually tidy for a crime scene. Nothing suggests any sign of a fight. She has a packet of play cigarette next to her hand. Did she drop it when she fell? This poor woman's head is resting in a very even-shaped pool of blood. She just has one wound on the back of the head. There are no other wounds or signs of a struggle. I can't see any other mark on the floor. Hmm, the body is hidden by the counter and is not visible from the tobacco shop store. Many customers might have thought that Mrs. Asher had popped out. Red liquid is oozing out. Is it blood? No, it's just some strawberries that are losing their juice. They probably come from the fruit and vegetable shop opposite. It's not just any railway guide, it's an ABC. It's open at the letter A. There are no prints on the book. The counter is covered with fingerprints all on top of one another. Unfortunately, it will not be possible to use them. There are cigarettes packets in a mess on the shelf. So, Poirot, any news? So, an ABC guide with no fingerprints, but prints all over the counter. Normally, the tobacco shop does not sell ABC guides. Exactly. Mon ami, could you have a word with the neighbors? Some may have seen something. Of course, my friend, I'll do it straight away. The teal does not appear to have been touched. I have to check that nothing is missing from it. has just made a fan click. It would be best to examine the rest of the till. is full of money, but there is something strange.
This must be the key to the back of the shop. The door is locked. Blood. Did Alice Asher suffer from nosebleeds? An inscription in German. Souvenir of our honeymoon in the Black Forest. To my Alice forever, Franz Asher. The Ashers were a lovely couple when they were young. This interior is very simple. Mrs. Asher lived very simply. Such a pretty decoration should be at the center of the motif to respect the symmetry. sound as if something was unlocked. These drawings appear to be attached to the chest of drawers. They won't move. From Mr. Adam Flint, Royal Bank, Eastfield Road, Andover, to Mrs. Alice Asher, 5 Bishops Road, Andover. Dear Mrs. Asher, further to your request of 12 February 1935, I have informed my superiors of your wish to apply for a loan to acquire the lease of the shop you rent from Mr. Fairfax. Despite the seriousness of your case, I regret to inform you that your request has been denied. The amount of your personal contribution, £11, is not high enough and represents too small a part of the final transaction. I remain at your disposal for any questions. Adam Flint Mrs. Asher's meager savings were not enough for her to own the tobacco shop, but will largely cover her funeral costs. Mm. 
Medicine. Laudanum-based cough medicine, Mrs. Asher, and Dover Morley Laboratory, London. It's strange to find such an elaborate medicine from a leading London laboratory in the home of such a modest woman. What a strange box. It looks like you have to slide the slats of wood to open it. Hmm, it is blocked. Hmm, it is blocked. Hmm, it is blocked. Hmm, it is blocked. This button appears to activate a mechanism. That should do it. A necklace of bright blue stones. Who is this young woman? To my dear Aunt Alice, Marie Drauer. Have you found anything? The victim has a niece. We must find her. Let us now try and get our brand cells to work. The motive is definitely not financial gain. There is no sign of a struggle and the till has not been forced or emptied. I think I've looked everywhere here. Let us see if I can find any more information in the shop's surroundings. A lovely lot of letters, four pence only. A bottle of poor quality vinegar. The smell could awaken the dead. This woman appears to be a smoker. She's a big smoker. She must have been a customer at the tobacco shop. How much are your lettuce, please? 
A lettuce? That'll be five pence, kind sir. Five pence? That's right. Maybe so slightly hard of hearing. I heard you shouting a lovely large lettuce, four pence only, earlier. Did I? Well, I must have been mistaken, begging your pardon. But if I said four, it's four. Why not take two for eight? No, thank you. I was only asking. Did you know Alice Asher well? And for starters, who are you? I'm Hercule Poirot, the detective. Tch, you're foreign, that's for sure, with your accent and your odd way about you. And you'll hear about Alice's murder, I suppose. Well, I've nothing to say to you. Did you speak to the victim yesterday? No, I never saw her. I do not quite understand. You work next door to each other, but you do not see each other? It's true. I didn't see her all day. I know that you went to the tobacco shop yesterday. Well? So you killed Mrs. Asher with a blow to the head? No! You asked for a packet of plays. She turned round to take it from the shelf and you hit her. One blow. Listen, I didn't kill Alice, I swear. But it's true that I did go to the shop yesterday. At what time? Six o'clock. She left me a note saying she wanted some strawberries if I got some. I received them late, about six. So I took them over to her. But you did not see her. She wasn't in the shop, so I just put the strawberries on the counter and left. You were not alarmed? I thought Alice had just gone to get her medicine from her room and that she'd be straight back. You mentioned medicine. Something for her cough. She used to take it a lot. Who do you think killed her? France. Her scoundrel of a husband. He was always after her for something. Well, he's a foreigner. Uh, sorry, sir. What I mean is he's German. That's even worse. Did you see Franz Asher enter the tobacco shop late yesterday afternoon? Well, no. But at that time of the day, the streets are packed, and I have better things to do than watch her shop. Hey, Poirot. I've found the victim's niece. She's waiting for you in the back of the shop, if you want to question her. Thank you, mon ami. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Mrs. Asher was killed here. The absence of marks in the shop and the regular shape of the blood stains indicated beyond a doubt. <laughs> Jap had the body removed out of respect for the victim's niece. His attention is commendable. Is our grief sincere? She appears to be very upset. She's dressed in mourning. She looks for Jail. Stop crying, please. It is very annoying. You don't understand. My aunt was the only family I had. <laughs> if you are her only relative, you would be the only one who inherits. Sir, my aunt was poor. And in any case, I'm not interested in any legacy. <laughs> Yes, that is what everyone says. <laughs> Hello.
Hmm, Hastings, please see this young lady home. I fear that it's quite impossible to finish our interview at present. Poirot, what have you done? I've never known you be so brutal. We have to wait for him to sleep it off. He's all yours, Poro. There are a few things I need to check. That must be some way of sobering him up. I wonder what his wife used to do. He must have scared the customers away. It's Ali Sasha's notebook. Ah, that's interesting. It probably contains information about our possible debtors and creditors. Bodley. The fruit seller has debts too. She will probably be more cooperative thanks to this piece of information. Hmm. A box of new stockings. According to the victim's account book, you owed her ten pounds for tobacco and magazines. That's a lie. She owed me one pound. I swear. Enough lies. It's not lies. But you're not quite as clever as what you think. Now, please be so kind as to explain this. Look at my account book. Alice owed me eleven pounds for fruit and vegetables. I may have had a slate at her shop, but she had one at mine. She owed me one pound. And that reminds me I have to get it back from her niece. That is quite enough. Your account book has saved you. But I might ask Chief Inspector Jap to throw you in the cells for one or two nights while he checks your entries. Do you want to go to prison? Prison? Now that's not fair. I haven't done nothing. In that case, I am counting on your full collaboration. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. I'll just borrow your bottle a moment. Take it. It's what Alice used to sober up her husband. But try not to empty the bottle. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. He's not in any condition to be questioned. I have to find a way to sober him up. Mes amis, I can say without a doubt that poor Mrs. Asher was killed between half past five and six. Killed when the street was packed with people. That's rather bold. I've been talking to the neighbours and... No one's seen anything? Or rather it's anything and everything. Am I wrong? <sighs> no. Bien. We must grill this villain Asher before he falls asleep again. The 
this man is in rather a bad state. This man has been fighting and he smells of alcohol. We know that you threatened to kill your wife, Asha. So what? You shouldn't take things so seriously, sir. Nothing but empty threats. We didn't get on all that badly. So, if things were going so well with your wife, why did you not live with her? She was the one that left. Nothing to do with me, sir. You can't have treated her very well for her to run away. No, sir, no. I wouldn't say I'd ever laid a finger on her, but it was only normal. She was my wife. Are you often involved in fights? I don't know what you mean. The truth is that someone gave you a good beating. A beating? No way. All right, he tore my coat and gave me a black eye. Did you see the state of him? Very interesting. Who is the other that you struck? Probably best if I tell you everything. Yesterday afternoon, I met Roderick Tanner. We'd bet on a dog fight together. An illegal bet, naturally. Yes, sir. Our dog won. Roderick got the money, but he refused to give me my share. And you thought about it. What time was this? In the evening, about six, I think. We were on the other side of town. You see, I couldn't have killed my wife. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. The murderer probably pretended to be a customer. He hit the shopkeeper from behind as she turned around to serve him. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. The murderer deliberately left behind this ABC as a signature. The absence of fingerprints and the fact that it is open at letter A for Endover leaves little doubt. Asher's alibi appears to be confirmed. All the same, I'm going to call and check that he did have a fight with this tanner on the afternoon of the murder. You can never trust this sort of chap. One thing is certain, Asher was a ruffian who used to beat his wife. But he's not very educated. It certainly was not him who wrote the letter signed ABC. Let's resume these things. We know the murderer pretended to be a customer. He did not kill her for money. That appears to be certain. I agree with you on that point. And the murderer left an ABC guide as a signature. Therefore, it's likely he wrote the letter. Indeed, but that doesn't explain why and how he did it. You are quite right. Why he did it is a mystery. But as for how he did it, we do know enough to try and reconstruct the events. The killer enters the shop. Mrs. Asher turns around to greet her customer. The murderer asks her for some tobacco. She turns her back to him. He seizes the opportunity to strike her. He then places the ABC upside down before leaving. Everything appears to match the crime scene, mon cher Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Asher has a strong alibi and we don't have any other suspect. But what was the point of this crime? She had no debts. 
She gave Franz Asher money regularly. She wasn't owed money. Nobody stood to gain anything. No doubt about it. The murderer is insane. Hmm. And I fear that we had not heard the last of him. I hope you're wrong for once. Bien. Let's go back to London. If we hurry, we should catch the two past seven train. Are you coming? No, unfortunately, I have to talk with Andover police. See you soon, then. Are you coming, Hastings? Let's go home. There's nothing for us here. Well, do you have any idea about the killer's identity? Hmm. The crime was committed by a man of medium height, with red hair and suspicious eyes. He has a slight limp on the right foot and a wart just below his shoulder blade. Poirot! Mon ami, what do you want? You fix upon me a look of dog-like devotion and demand of me a pronouncement à la Sherlock Holmes. Now for the truth. I do not know what the murderer looks like, nor where he lives, nor how to set hands upon him. What shall we do, then? Nothing. Nothing? Do not be so impatient, Hastings. The killer will manifest himself soon enough. I thought I heard the postman. Maybe there's some news. I would go and see. Dear Mr. Poirot, well, what do you think? I believe that I won this round. The end of our affair went like clockwork, don't you feel? But the fun has only just started. I would like to draw your attention to Bexil on Sea on the 25th of this month. We're having a crazy time. Best wishes, ABC. The next crime will be in Bexil. We must warn Jap to Scotland Yard. Did the letter indicate anything that might help the police? To be honest, I think we can already guess something about the next victim. But I need to think about it a little more. Let us examine this more closely. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. Yes, this eye is weird. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. Yes, the eye characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Hmm, the W is not printed properly. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. Of course, the W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. Right, let us compare this with the other letter. That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Both letters were written on the same typewriter and show the same characteristics. You surprise me, Poirot. You usually ignore material proof. But there is nothing usual about these cases, things. Nothing must be overlooked. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work.
So, Poirot, have you found something? Oui, I believe so. But I am afraid it is not enough to stop the murderer. Let us go and see Chief Inspector Chapa. I will explain there. <laughs> 